Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me for day number 18 of these prophetic teachings. Um, I just want to thank all those who've continued to um, move forward with these teachings and pray that you are taking them to the Lord for, for their light and knowledge and understanding. Again, these are eternal truths of the kingdom. Um, this is not what we can see in front of us as far as... Um, with our eyes, everything that, that God is walking us into is spiritual. Um, and as he walks us through spiritually, then it will manifest itself physically, but it is so important for us to be in a spiritual mindset right now so that we can understand the events that are truly happening around us. And also for the protection of those that are among us, um, being able to recognize those who are truly, um, instruments in God's hands for his work to move forward. Um, and as always, I pray that you will take everything that, um, all these scriptures to the Lord, um, and that, um, he may give you further light knowledge and understanding. I'm here to enlighten, to help bring questions and understandings to your mind. And in the process of revealing, um, some of the mysteries of the kingdom of God that he's asking me to reveal at this time and bring into the light that you will go to the Lord and return a report to him and, um, let him walk you through the process and, and show you, um, the kingdom, eternal truths of the kingdom of God. Um, so with that being said today, we are going to be in Luke one. So if you'd like to get your scriptures and follow along. And I thought that I was done speaking about John the Baptist, but apparently um, God has more to share as I was up again most of the night being taught. And <laughs> so I'm going to, again, reveal things that if you're not learning in the spirit, it might be very hard for you to understand. And if you haven't watched the other videos, please go back because there's a pattern to how he's doing this. And I never know what he's going to do until he, he tells me this is where I want you. Um, and this is what I want, you know, in the scriptures, and this is what I want you to share. And so I don't know from day to day what this is even going to look like. I have no idea until he reveals that to me. So if you aren't in a place of learning in the spirit and you're still in the worldly mindset of what the world has perceived the kingdom of God looks like, I encourage you to shut the video off um, just to eliminate um, that confusion and um, of things that that people might not be ready to hear yet. So he is having me, um, in Luke one, this is the naming of John the Baptist. And again, he's taking me back, um, through this patriarchal order and wanting me to bring more things into light about this patriarchal order and the truth that has literally been hidden within the scriptures that are now being manifested. And we talked about yesterday that the, um, in Revelations 10, 7 about, um, let me see, the, that when the seventh angel sounds, the mysteries of the kingdom should be finished. So, um, and again, um, he keeps taking me back to this dream that I had last October. And um, the first day I was just told to give the dream, just share the dream. And it was so raw and it was so overwhelming that uh, there was so much to it that I couldn't even, I, I didn't even explain a fourth of what the dream entailed, but, uh, and then he took me back and he said, I'm, um, in the, in the follow-up video, I, I can't remember exactly how I, I was having a conversation with him and I was just like, wow, this is the most amazing dream I've ever you know, seeing like, and he says, no, this isn't, this is, this isn't basically, no, it wasn't a dream. This is his reality. If we would let him, if we'd let God get us to that reality of what is truly the worlds without numbers, what they represent, how his kingdom is eternally ran. Why, you know, people will be like, well, this world has been around for thousands upon thousands of years. And so these scriptures say it's only a 7,000 year, you know, temporal existence of this world. So that can't be correct. Well, if we understand that every 7,000 years, it, it comes to completion and wholeness. And on 8,000 year, it goes into renewal and the line of succession is moved from father to son. Yes, this world that we're in now has been around for a very, very long time. Um, 
along with the, the worlds without numbers that I, were displayed in the eternities. And as we understand that, then the, um, and when people say, well, you know, this world's been around for a long time, so scripture doesn't make sense. The pattern actually can be given of this is a kingdom. And how is a kingdom ran? A kingdom is ran from passing the line of succession from father to son, father to son, father to son. And that's how it's been since God created the very first world of his. And then he's continued to pass it down to his sons. So in that follow-up video of the dream, he was having me emphasize to the sons that you know, a house divided cannot stand. And people have to choose who are they serving. And he desires so badly for these sons to remember the kingdoms in which they have, remember the things of the kingdom of God in which they've already achieved. Because if if they don't remember those things, that's how Satan um, stills people's glory, is that they are they are in this state, they, in this um brought here to help usher in the millennial reign because that's how a family works. They help one another. And so they will leave their worlds and come to others and assist in bring ushering in the millennial reign and preparing the world for that. But if these sons of God do not remember who they are, then the house is divided. They can't, they can't defend a kingdom that they don't know exist. And so that was talked about in the follow-up dream of the, the first dream that I was given. So, um, th everything that he's had me teach over the last few days is the patriarchal order of the sons of God. And it's so important that the sons of God understand from the kingdom mindset, not from what the world has taught them this patriarchal order is, but what the kingdom patriarchal order truly is and what that looks like in God's eternal family, because it is vast and it is just, Oh, it's just vast. That's all I can explain. It's mind blowing to see. Um, I still just to think about what I was showing just kind of overwhelms me a little bit because it was so much. But um, so today. Um, so the purpose behind what he is having me share and bringing to light is to awaken the sons of God. And also in the process of that daughters, because if there's there's kingdoms and there's fathers of these kingdoms, then there's also, um, well, you, you would see kings and queens. <laughs> they also have spouses and these, uh, these women are also um, part of this big plan. And right now I, I feel strongly in my heart that this, the process has been that now the women, um, most of the women have been awakened <laughs> and now the women will help the sons of God um, step into their roles. And again, this is for the house of Israel. So, um, it, it, that's all I can say. It's, it's, this is for the house of Israel. And at the end, I'm going to again, rock the boat, <laughs> but it will bring absolute light and understanding to another mystery that's been hidden. But as we see it, it will absolutely bring things into a completely clearer perspective on God's kingdom work. So we are going to go first. Um, we're going to, we're going to go from in Matthew one from 57 through 80. And this is the naming of John the Baptist. So 57. Now Elizabeth full time came and she I'm sorry, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her. And they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day, so we just talked about that, the number eight is renewal. Um, they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, not so, but he shall be called John. And they said, and they said unto her, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, how he would have him called. Because if you remember his, his uh, voice was taken and he asked, for a writing tablet and wrote saying, his name is John. And they marveled all. 
So <clears throat> the very first thing that these parents did when John was being named was that they broke the traditions that the world just continued to say, oh, this is how it is. And we talked about yesterday about um, before um, I went over those scriptures, how Christ on the Sabbath day, you know, he was he was teaching things that were true traditions of the fathers and he was breaking the customs of man and they and the um, the people of, you know, religion and, and that that worldly mindset of no, this is what it looks like. This is a book. This is what we have in front of us. And this is what we do instead of realizing this is from a kingdom mindset in the unseen from the natural eye. <laughs> um, and so he was he was rocking the boat as far as their traditions. He was letting them know that they were false. And one of the things that the Lord asked, actually asked me to encourage you guys to pray about with the Sabbath is God gave the sun, the moon, and the stars as signs in the heavens. But have you ever asked what those signs in the heavens are actually for through God's eyes? So that might help you with the Sabbath. So again, here is John the Baptist's parents giving a name that is not in their family line. It was given to them by God. And they're breaking the customs and the traditions of their fathers. Um, and because of that, and it's, so the very first thing they did that when, when John came to the earth was the traditions of the fathers were being broke. And if we remember when Christ was speaking in the temple at age 12, and what he revealed to me was he was teaching that the promises that turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the, and the children to the promises of the fathers. And this is the promises of the fathers. This is what was being displayed in John's, um, in the naming of John. Okay. So 64, sorry, this is a lot and I kind of get overwhelmed sometimes. So I'm sorry if I get excited and talk fast. It's just when the spirit is upon me, it's, it's, I just get super excited. Um, Okay, wait, sorry, 63. Oh, no. Okay, we talked about 63. 64. And his mother was opened, sorry, and his mouth, sorry, was opened immediately. So so now John the Baptist, um, father's mouth. Um, was opened immediately. And his tongue loosed. So now he's going to share all the things that he wasn't allowed to speak during this process. And he spake and praised God. So this is God from the first kingdom. From the heavenly realm. Okay. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them. And all these sayings were noise, noised abroad throughout all the hill country of... Um, Judah, Judea, I'm sorry, I said that, Judea, and all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts. So these teachings were supposed to be taken to our heart and, and returning reporting so that Christ can truly walk us through the process of these, these higher understandings. Um, so laid them up in their hearts saying, what manner of child shall this be? And he, and the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied saying. So this, this was coming from the heavenly realm. And remember, we were talking about the patriarchal order and the father and the son. So this is what Zacharias said with the Holy Ghost filling him. <clears throat> Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. And again, all these teachings are speaking to the house of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all those that hate us. To perform the, 
to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. So let's stop there. And this promised oath was that the restoration of this covenant, um, it, the Abrahamic covenant, was the restoration of the gospel of, in the last days. For through the kingdom gospel, all... Um, Oh my goodness, I don't know what I wrote right there. Oh, okay, sorry. Kingdom gospel to all the nations of the earth are blessed. So it's the restoration of the fullness of the kingdom gospel. That's the promise. That all this truth of this 7,000 year understanding of the reign of this world and how this, the kingdom gospel and how... Um, these worlds without numbers uh, continue to ascend and how the patriarchal order continues to, um, the line of succession continues to be passed on from father to son, father to son. It is truly the restoration of the gospel of God, the kingdom gospel in the last days, and it will go out to all the nations of the earth. That is the, that is the promise. Um, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. And, um, let's see. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. Okay, we talked about that before, the highest of God. He is the son of God that is, is in charge of this world. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. So whose people? The Lord's people, his people. That's what he's explaining. Remember, we talked about there's 24 elders. So there's, um, so... John's work, as far as that had already been completed, now he is mentoring his son through this process. We'll mentor his son through this process. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness. And this is what is happening now. The house of Israel has been in darkness and he is truly bringing Christ. Christ is literally bringing the house of Israel into light and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the valley of peace. And that true peace and joy truly comes through the Savior walking us through this process. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. So again, all these things are to be taught in the spirit. And was in the desert till the day he of his showing unto Israel. So again, uh, the house of Israel is hidden. And they're now being brought into the light. And they have been hidden. Just like John was hidden. Just like Christ, he, he was hidden from the people until um, his mission was brought into the light. Um, so the Lord wanted me to, um, to share, um, a couple of different things. The first one is if we understand eternal life and how it works, then we understand why Satan has not wanted children being born into this world because he knows how people return, and that is through birth, but he does not know um, when they will return. He only knows how. So he doesn't know who or or uh, when. He just knows how. And so what a better way to, um, just like, you know, in Christ and, and John the Baptist's time, I mean, they were, they were killing the babies. It's no different now because Satan knows that his time is very short. These people are returning. But if we don't understand eternal lives and how they actually return, um, and become spirit led, then 
then how will we know the people that are um, in front of us? The spirit will manifest those things to us. And I believe that that's the teaching is going to have me do tomorrow, but we'll see. Um, we must become a spirit led people that our hearts are not hardened and our minds. Um, we allow him to renew our minds and we allow him to take, we allow Christ to take us from this worldly mindset to a kingdom mindset because the things of the spirit, they will now manifest themselves onto the earth physically, but we still have to be able to recognize in the spirit who is standing in front of us. Because what happened with both John the Baptist and Christ, they were killed because people did not stop it and, and be led by the spirit on who they were. They just absolutely wanted to um, condone everything that they were doing. Um, and another thing that he asked me to share is in Revelations 10, 11, um, well, hold on. Well, no, I'm just going to share that because here's, here's the bombshell, I guess, <laughs> the rocking the boat. And this is what he was teaching me most of the night and having back in the book of Revelations. So there has been um, confusion forever about the book of Revelations, what John actually was given this vision of the book of Revelations and is actually John the Baptist. And that's why it talks about the tribes, the, the 24 elders. John the Baptist was given this revelation and understanding to complete um, his um to the completion of this kingdom. And as we read the book of Revelations with that understanding of who, what John was actually writing it and who now that we have an understanding of who John actually is and the, the line of the patriarchal order and what that looks like, the book of Revelations will take on a completely different understanding to the house of Israel. And that is why it talks about the tribes, the, the gathering and the scattering the seven seals, everything that you go through in the book of Revelations will just come to life. But if we don't understand eternal lives, um, then in Revelations 10, 11, the angel is actually telling John, and he said, thou must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. So if we understand that life and death, life and death, life and death, that's how we eternally progress because we progress in mortal bodies. And then let this be a warning to us that he will be among the people prophesying to them. And if we don't know who he is, uh, the same mistake will be made again. Um, or, well, maybe it wasn't a mistake. I don't know. But it's just so important that we're spirit-led. And, and the reason that he had me talk about this is because this morning... Um, I had just gotten on YouTube really quickly and I just scrolled up and I didn't even actually click on anything and listen to it. But there was two different posts and he brought both of them to my attention. So the first post, so they're both prophecies from people who, one's a, a prophetess and one's a, one's, well, he's prophesying, so I would say he's a prophet. Um, but they are... There are two different people that were given the same, had the same message, just kind of labeled different. And the first one, he said, time to come alive. And the other said, dead things are coming back to life. Um, when we see this from a kingdom understanding, the ancient are returning, born again, back into mortality to finish their work. The truth of eternal life and resurrection. So may that help us see the importance of truly becoming a spirit-led people as the house of Israel rises up, um, as the house of Israel is uncovered and brought out of hiding and the spirit begins to manifest um, to people who people are and um you know, like, like the dream, may we truly be those people in the crowd that step forward and help in this process and not those who step back and be quiet, knowing that we 
had um, Christ testify to things in our own life. So I hope that that came off the clarity today. And um, again, please take these things to the Lord. Um, this is his work. I can do the best with what I've been given from on high. And that's the goal in all this is to just do the best that I can to reveal some of what he's given me um, with as much clarity as I possibly can to simply enlighten your mind to, to um, I guess, provoke questions into your mind that so that, that um, your mind can be enlightened so you can take, I'm sorry, those questions to the Lord so that he can answer them for you. Um, I am grateful for all those who are continuing to watch these um, I know that, that that God has great purpose in all that he is asking his people to do at this time if we will truly not fear him and understand the promise of, of what has truly been, been given and the purpose of the house of Israel as these mysteries of the kingdom of God are being revealed. So God bless and have an amazing day.